But however, when we find ourselves in the notch of worshiping God, not because it's making us feel good, but because it's what our duty and our, our calling is and our purpose is, we'll find that we do feel good. And that's the, that's, that's the right place to be. Amen. And so we worship God in the beauty of holiness. Uh, we worship Him with a clean heart, with clean hands. And that's why we, we, we get to the place where we say, Oh God, search me and know me. Try me. What, what is my heart like? And what is, what is, what is my, my heart before God? What is my hands before God? That's real, pure, true worship. And so uh, when we, we faced up last week, we were talking about uh, what would Jesus say? What would Jesus wear? What would Jesus watch? What would Jesus give? What would Jesus eat? What would Jesus drink? How, uh, where would Jesus live? Uh, what would Jesus desire? Where, uh, where would Jesus work, sing, play, go, date, hear, read, believe? And so when we do all that, amen, it's real worship to God when we align our life with that. Okay, so let's jump there. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Worship is obeying God. I think I said that. That was the last one I think I said last week. Worship is obeying God. It is also obeying Him with the right attitude. Obeying God with the right attitude. We need to ask Him... How should I answer? How should I answer? How should I respond? Have you ever child told, uh, seen a child do what they are told, but, they, but the way they did it was horrible, horrible? Their very actions were declaring, I'm sitting down on the outside. But on the inside, I'm still standing. Or I'm putting these toys away, but I'm throwing them and hoping some will break. That will show you. Maybe all of you can relate, relate to that. I can. You know, I'm doing it, but I'm not doing it because I want to. I'm doing it because I have to. And uh, we, can, we can say about children... But we have to understand, and this isn't in your notes, but I want to talk here for a moment. And Sister Rachel, your testimony gave alignment to this. And uh, 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 when we look, and Sister Ali, you were singing, three elements of faith is this. It is obedience, it is attitude, and it is expectation. So our, our worship, faith is a part of our worship, but it needs to be that we are obedient, that we have the right attitude, and we have the right expectation. Let's talk about this for a few moments, because really the Word of God uh, really is very clear in giving us the three elements of faith. In Genesis chapter number 22, a very familiar account to us, where God told Abraham to take his only son, his only son, whom he loved, and he wanted him to take him to a particular mountain. We know that it was Mount Moriah. And he wanted him to sacrifice his son. Let's look at the elements of worship that are there because they're elements of faith that Abraham exercised. Let's see how we align when we look at that model that's given to us through the life of Abraham. So obeying the voice of God. So he hears the voice of God. There are ways, how do we hear God? Tell me, how do we hear God? How do we, how do we hear from God? By reading the Bible. By reading the Bible, we hear from pray. God. And pray, we hear from God. By our heart. By our heart. God is here and we hear the voice within our spirit. Within our spirit. We know that our spirit, our soul was made alive. Our spirit has been made to recognize now the spirit of God as he directs us. Other ways that we hear the voice of God? The minister preaching. The minister preaching. Any other ways? These are all good ways. We hear 
hear the voice of God through song, uh, through tongues, interpretation, um, the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, the Spirit of God can speak to us through many things. Some folks, maybe you would have a dream, and God would speak to you through that dream. Maybe God would give a vision. God still speaks through vision. Uh, I think that uh, as we hear this, and you may say, well, I hear, I feel my spirit, God speaking to me. To know that God is speaking to you, only you can know that. But does it align with the word of God? Is it consistent with God's word? And so God still speaks by his voice. And there should be an expectation that when God speaks to us, that there is going to be his goodness that comes through his speaking in our lives. And so, uh, in spite of what the natural mind, uh, 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 mind may say, we know that God is going to bring forth goodness because we are obeying. So here it is that God says, I, Abraham, I want you to take your one and only son. I know he has another son, but this is the son of promise. It's not the son of the flesh, but this is the son of promise that God has given Abraham Isaac. And he said to him, I want you to take your only son, the one that you love, and I want you to offer him in, uh, in the mountain as a sacrifice. Now, uh, think here with me for a moment. Nothing like this has ever happened before. We never read an account beside God giving his own son. We never read an account of this in the word of God. But Abraham knows that God has spoke to his heart and he wants to be obedient. The elements of faith is that, that you're obedient in the right attitude and there is an expectation. Do you hear Abraham grumbling over his needing to take Isaac to the mountain and sacrifice him? He has an attitude that he rises quickly. He does quickly. He doesn't procrastinate. But he does quickly what God has spoke to his heart to do. And uh, he knows that it's going to be a, a burnt offering. And so uh, uh, it, he it's, it's amazing. Immediately he obeys what God asked him to do. In our life. Worship is obeying God and what He's asked us to do. It is. So many things in our life that God has aligned and where God has placed us. We've talked about what would Jesus do? What would Jesus eat? What would Jesus say? What would Jesus ask to be? And so when He places us in these positions, we've got to ask ourselves, I'm going to be obedient to what's aligned to me. But I am also going to have a good attitude with it. And that's exactly what Abraham did. He had a great attitude. He, he knew that God would had asked him to do this. Do you know that there are small steps in our life that God asks us to do things? You may, it may be nothing for you to do some things. Because there's small steps, but God wants our obedience. But then there's times in our life where there are big things that really take us being obedient to God, where it really, where the demands are hard and where the moments are tested. And so the demand is hard for Abraham here. He's to take his only son and he's to offer him as a sacrifice. So he is obedient and, and now he expects God to do something. He, he said, listen, he said, I want you to stay here, sir, and the, the lad and I are going to go yonder and worship, but we will come again. There's an expectancy. God will raise him from the dead. God will do something. We will come again. Do you know that God wants us to be obedient and God wants us to have the right attitude, but God wants us to have an expectancy that he will work. Listen, I, I, I know that there may be health issues in our life. And if you choose to trust God by faith, that's good. There are others that tr choose to trust God by, 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 by going to the remedy. Uh, I'm being obedient. I'm trusting God with this. But I believe that there's going to be an outcome that God is going to work and move. Whether it be health-wise, whether it be financial-wise, 
whether it be relationship wise, God, I'm trusting this relationship to you. I'm trusting my marriage to you. I'm trusting my children to you. I'm trusting this, this situation. I give forgiveness, God, but the rest is all up to you. And I'm expecting you to give a good outcome, however it is. I mean, all of us have our things. But do you know real worship is being obedient and having the right attitude regardless of what we're dealing with? And then having an expectation that is worship that God is going to bring in a good outcome. That's what Sister Holly said about tonight. There is hope, so hold on. Really, hope is worship. It's worship. In the face of adversity, in the face of things not looking like they should turn out a good way, it's saying, I'm hoping, I'm expecting. You know, Abraham was already worshiping Brother Justin before he went to Mount Moriah. He was worshiping and telling his servant, we will come again. That was worship to God. He was worshiping Brother Eli when he was obedient, not to procrastinate, but get up and first thing in the morning, he traveled to go to that place that God was going to show him that there he would sacrifice his son. So worship is an obedience, but worship is also an expectancy that God is going to bring a good outcome, and, and I'm going to have the right attitude in the middle of it. Sometimes I have to work on those things, I'll be honest with you. I have to work on the attitude part. I have to work on the expectancy part. In my obedience to God. Abraham had the right attitude. I believe that God works in our life that will have the right attitude. See, let's jump back to our notes. We can make a good appearance. We can dress right. We can act right. And it appears that we are all right. But on, but but inside, but inside, we are ugly. Inside is the word. We are ugly. We are mean. We are mean. We are unholy. So the words are inside, we are ugly, we are mean, we are unholy, ungodly, impure, and not pleasing to God. We are like King Amaziah in the following verse. Does someone want to read 2 Chronicles 25 2? You can just read it off the page. I'll give you the word if you want. But not with a perfect heart. So here is the king. We're going to get into the details of things. 25 when he takes the position of being king. And he does what's right before God. But he doesn't do it with a perfect heart. You see. Let's stop for a minute. It is our duty to worship God. And it's our duty to do what's right. But can we do everything but do it all wrong? We can do it, but not with a perfect heart. God wants our worship. And worship is obedience. Do you remember when King Saul, he was commanded to destroy everything of the Malachites? But he saw the sheep that looked wonderful. And he saw some other things, and he, he said, I'm going to keep the best of the best. And Samuel said, did you do what God asked you to do? Oh, yeah. Well, what's that bleeding of sheep that I hear? And so I said, oh, wait a second. I kept them because I'm going to sacrifice them. And Samuel says to Saul, he says, but God said to destroy it. Your obedience is more important than the sacrifice of those animals to God. God didn't want those animals for sacrifices. God wanted the obedience of Saul. 
You know, sometimes we think that we can do things our way, and we think that we can, we can make it work out for the kingdom of God. God is not looking for us to give Him things in our way. God is looking for our surrender. God is looking for our obedience. So being obedient to God is the highest form of worship that we can give. We can come in here and we can raise our hand, but if we've not been obedient to the Word of God and to the commandments of God all week, it really doesn't mean much to God. God is looking for a heart that is obedient. So it starts with our faith, with our, our obedience, it starts with our attitude, and it starts with our expectancy. Don't get me wrong, God wants our hands raised and God wants to hear our words and our worship. But it all comes from a heart that is surrendered in obedience and with a good attitude and with expectation. <clears throat> I'm going to jump back. We need to hate sin like God hates sin. And quit covering it up. We need to hate sin like God hates sin. And quit covering it up. Do you have the nerve to pray this prayer? Someone read Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24. It's right there on your page. Complete. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of the last. Amen. I was talking about finding, as I preached Sunday morning, that narrow entrance, not the broad entrance, where we really pray and we say, God, search my heart. You know, the heart is the seat of our affection. That's what the Bible refers to, our heart, a place where all of our affections are. And so search my heart and then try my thoughts. You ever try to get your heart and your mind to correlate with one another? Sometimes our mind and our heart doesn't correlate. So we ask God, search my heart, that seat of affection, and search a part of my mind. Make sure every and lead me in the way that's everlasting. If there's something that breaches real worship, then God, I want it to be fixed. This prayer of David is one that we should pray often. We should pray often. Our human nature is to justify ourselves. Justify ourselves. We may call an action sin when someone else is doing it, but we excuse. We excuse it in ourselves. Isn't it easier to find that little piece of something in someone else's uh, eye and we have that big beam sticking out of our own? Another mistake we make is comparing ourselves with others. The other person's sin seems worse than ours, so we feel justified that we are better. Since we are better, or at least in our opinion, we think we are okay. God's not looking for your standard of worship to be by comparing your life to someone else. God is looking for your standard of worship to be that you have invited the Lord to search your heart and your soul. We are the one who puts degrees, degrees on sin, not God. There is only one sin that God says is worse, and that is blaspheming against the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. How many sins does it take to make a sin? One. One. And how many lies does it take to make a liar? One. Sin is sin to God. My sin, your sin, it does not matter to God. If it is sin that is unrepented, it will not be excused. If it is sin that is unrepented, it will not be excused. Let's come clean. Someone read Psalms 19, verse 12 and 14. I can give you the words. Amen. He said, cleanse me from my secret faults. 
Sometimes we don't even realize our own faults, do we? God cleansed me from them, revealed them to me. From presumptuous sins, don't let them have dominion over me. He went on to say, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. So I want to read Matthew 15, 8. I'll give it to you. You're not hurt. This people's cross lines, we give them out and honor me at their lips, but they are far. Uh huh. It's far from me. Is Craig, who said you didn't know the words? Well, I didn't. Well, I read it. <laughs> you did good. We can draw an eye to God with our lips, can't we? But our hearts can be far away. You know, sometimes it's easy just to raise your hand, hallelujah. Or however you, whatever you say. But your heart's not in it. We don't want our heart to be far from God. We want our heart and our lips to align. That when we're before the presence of God and in our life daily, that our heart and our lips glorify God. So I want to read first, uh, I'm sorry, John 14, 15, 21, 23, 24. You can read from there. I'll give you the words. If you love me, keep my commandments. You that have my commandments and obey it. Oh, it sounds very good. Keep it. Keep it. Good guess on that. Either that is... Um, he that is love it. It is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Jesus answered said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and he will keep unto him and me. I'm way off. Oh, oh, sorry, my legs broke me off. And that love me and will keep Come unto me and make our vote with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my commandments. That's very close to sayings. Sayings. Mm -hmm. And the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent. Amen. So the next sentence is this God wants our worship. God wants our worship. He wants our obedience. He wants us to trust Him. He wants it all. Someone read Hebrews 10, verse 22 through 26. I'll give you the words. Don't worry about that. Then us also, being dead to sins, draw near with a true.
It needs, it needs to be our lifestyle. It needs to be our lifestyle. Amen. God wants our worship. The elements of faith in our worship, once again, is obedience. The right attitude and an expectation. Our worship should be free of sin. We should search our hearts and our minds, every thought, where sin first begins. It begins as a thought, doesn't it? So if we allow our thoughts to be brought before the throne of grace and we tear down every stronghold, Everything that would exalt itself against the holiness of God. That's even our thoughts. Something that would admire the holiness of God. Tearing them down brings worship to God. I believe that there are good people. And, uh, you know, the, the world grabs a hold of it. And, and, and you can live a life that is so close to the mark. And man, one thing, because we have allowed something to rise up in our life. And, 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 and it bring, brings a fruition of sin. Even when we repent of it, it can mire our testimony. And it can cause our worship to give an excuse to someone else. So may the words of my mouth, uh, you know, they didn't have cell phones where they were texting and computers where they were typing. And the words of my fingers, May they be acceptable in thy sight, oh God. So everything that we do and say, we want it to be acceptable to God. Because it really should be emotion. That's why sometimes, you know, when we're tired or when we're doing a job that we may not even like to do, there are some things about my job I don't like to do. Everybody has those parts. But to understand that when we're doing, we need to be doing it as a worship to God. And it really will change how we do it. Does anyone have any thoughts or questions, comments?